Hey, what's up, YouTube? My name is Jake Rieger, and uh, this is exactly what you think it is. It's an introduction to Flask for Python. Um, so this is, uh, this is what we're going to be doing here. I'm pretty much going to start from the ground up, and we're going to go through each building block of Flask until we have created a basic CRUD application. It's not going to be uh, anything too special. Don't get, uh, don't get excited. It's just going to be a little, like, to-do taskmaster app um, and then finally we'll top it off by deploying to Heroku I feel like I should mention now before we continue on here that this tutorial does assume some prior knowledge of Python uh, how Python code is written it also assumes you know HTML CSS uh, you don't have to know it too well for this tutorial we don't write a whole lot but knowing how to write a basic HTML page would certainly be helpful otherwise it's pretty bare bones um, you should be able to follow along pretty easily if you know how to write code in general. All right, so this is what we're actually going to be making here. Uh, a little application called Taskmaster. It's basically just a to-do list. All right, and as you can see, it says you have no new tasks. Create one below, so let's do that. Do the dishes. So as you can see, it pops up in a little table here. We've got our task, the date it was added, and some actions. So we've got a delete action and an update action. Let's go ahead and check out the update action here. It brings us to a new page where we can do exactly what you would think, update the task. So I'm just going to go ahead and change this to do the dishes and the laundry. Click update, and there you go. It's updated in the table, do the dishes and the laundry. And then if we had completed it and we don't want it on our list anymore, we can just click delete. There it goes. All right, so uh, that's what we're going to be creating. All right, so let's start uh, with setting up our environment. So we need to install Python, obviously, uh, 3.6 or newer. I believe the current version is 3.7 point something, and uh, pip. Uh, then we're going to install the virtual env, virtual environment package from pip. We're going to create our project directory, set up folders, all of that, uh, create our virtual environment, and then we're going to install the required packages. And that should be enough to get us going. So let's do that. So... We'll start by just typing in Python into Google here. Head over to python.org, go to download, and just click the link. If you're on Mac or Linux, you have Python installed already. Uh, it should be Python 2.7. I don't remember if Python 3 comes installed already, but as you could see, I have Python 2.7 installed, and I also I have Python 3.6.1, so I'm good. Um, and this is how you check your current version here. If you're on Mac or Linux, uh, the command corresponds to the version, so you use Python if you want to use Python 2.7 and use the Python 3 command if you want to use Python 3, if you have it installed. And uh, this is the same for pip. You use pip if you're installing packages for Python 2, and you use pip 3 if you're installing packages for Python 3. Alright, so I already have Python installed, um, so I don't have to click download. The next thing we need to do is actually set up our work environment. So I'm in Visual Studio Code here. Uh, use whatever text editor IDE you like. I would strongly recommend Visual Studio Code, though. I think it's by far the most powerful, the easiest to use, quickest workflow. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and click Open Folder here. And I'm just going to go ahead, and actually I'm already in my projects folder, so this is fine. Um, put this wherever you'd like. Um, I'm going to go ahead and call this Flask Introduction. And then just click open. All right, and then I can close that. And then hit control tilde to open up a terminal here in our current folder. And I'm going to go ahead and type pip3 install, whoops virtual env, virtual env. And uh, I already have this installed, so this is going to go really quick. You most likely won't. Um, and this is going to be what allows us to create our virtual environment here. And if you're wondering uh, why we do that and don't just install the packages globally, it's so that if we wanted to work with other people, um, if we wanted to, you know, work on a project, collaborate, um, it makes it so that all of the requirements, all the packages that are needed are contained within the project itself and not on your system. 
in other directories so you can transfer the project around and everyone can just install the requirements into the working directory and have the exact setup that you had. So it, it makes it easier to uh, work with other people, and that's that's pretty much the gist of it. So that's what we're going to do. So now that we have uh, virtual and installed, we're going to go ahead and type virtual, whoops, virtual env env. And env is the name, as you can see, just popped up here. That could really be any name you want. Env is the convention. Um, it's short. You'll have to type it. So... All right, next up we need to activate the environment. So we're gonna go ahead and type source, env, bin, and activate, and hit enter. And as you can see, this little env in parentheses appeared. That's how we know we are now inside of our virtual environment. So anything we do or install for Python will be contained inside of this environment and won't install anywhere globally on our system. So let's go ahead and install the requirements. Um, so just go ahead and type pip3, install, and we need flask, and we need flask, whoops, flask sql alchemy, like that. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter, and that's going to install everything we need. All right, now that that's installed, I'm going to go ahead and create a new file here. I'm going to call it app.py, and I'm going to hit enter, and I'm going to go ahead and start writing a very, very basic, the most basic Flask app you can write. But it's going to give us an outline for the entire application. So before I do that, just so you guys can see, I'm going to go ahead and up the font size. I think 18 should be pretty big. Um, yeah, that works. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is uh, import Flask. So we're going to type from Flask, import, Flask with a capital F. Next, we need to set up our application. So we're going to go ahead and type app equals flask. And then in here, we're going to put underscore, underscore, name, underscore, underscore. And that's just referencing this file. So next up, we need to create a index route so that when we browse to the URL, we don't immediately just 404. And in uh, flask, you set up routes with the app route decorator. So at app dot route. And then in here, you're just going to pass in the URL string of your route. And we're going to hit enter. And then we're going to define the function for that route. So we're just going to call this index. And for now, we're just going to return a string. So just do hello world. And then finally, we're going to type if underscore underscore name. Whoops. Equals equals. underscore, underscore, main, underscore, underscore, app.run. And then for now, we're going to set debugging equal to true. So if we have any errors, they'll pop up on the web page and we can see. So that's pretty much it. That is a very basic Flask application. If we run this, it should work. It should pull up a page that says, hello world. So let's go ahead and see if that is the case. Come down to my terminal. And I'm going to execute this with Python 3. So I'm going to type Python 3 app dot pi. Come on. There we go. And uh, it starts up a web server here. So it's just localhost. And then the port's 5000. And there you go. Hello world. So as you could tell, it's pretty boring so far. So uh, let's spice it up. Let's, uh, let's talk about static content. Uh, we'll go over some templates. We'll go over how to use CSS and JavaScript. So let's create some new folders here. We're going to create two. We're going to call the first one static. And then we're going to make one more, and we're going to call this templates. And we're going to go up to here at our import, and we're going to also import render underscore template. So let's create a new file in here. We're going to call it index.html. We're going to come over to here. We're going to change this from return string to return render template. We're going to call that file index.html. And you don't have to specify the folder. The, the name is that name for a reason. It knows to look in that folder. So it's just the name of the file. All right, we're just going to create some boilerplate HTML here. Just type hello world2. So we know our template is what we're seeing and not that string anymore. 
So as you can see down here, it's automatically updating. So we should be able to refresh and see that we are now reading from our template. Hello world two. All right. So let's talk about template inheritance now. Um, if you don't know what that is, it's basically you create one master HTML file that, that contains kind of the, the skeleton of what each page is going to look like. And then you just inherit that in each other page and insert code where you need it. But it's, it basically makes it so you don't have to write this every single time. You only have to write like this and this, what's relevant. So if that didn't make sense, go ahead and show you how it's done. Call it base.html. All right, so this is going to be our skeleton. So let's create the boilerplate code here. And then I'm just going to get rid of this title. And I'm going to create a block. I'm going to call it head. And I'm going to, whoops, end block. All right, so what's this doing? This is Jinja2 syntax. This is uh, the template engine that Flask uses. Um, so basically what we're doing here is we're creating a block in the template. And this block is where we're going to insert our code on all the other pages that inherit this template. So this is pretty much outlining where we're going to insert our own code for each page. So I'm going to make one more and I'm going to call this body. And then I'm going to come over to index here. I'm going to get rid of all of this. And I'm going to come up here, whoops, and type extends. And then in quotes, I'm going to put the name of the base template here. Then I'm going to copy these blocks like that. Enter, enter. There we go. OK, so now I can put whatever I want here. So let's create. A. So let's create a h1 and we'll just say template. Sure. And now if I load this up, we should see template. So that's not all that special. Um, you probably think that seems like a lot of work just to get pretty much what we just had. But this is all you have to do for every page um, for pretty much the rest of your website as long as it follows this format. Um, and that includes things like linking style sheets and scripts that can all be done over here. So you only ever have to do it once. I just realized I had the, uh, the header and the, the head tag here. My bad. <laughs> it should still work. Yep. Okay. All right. So now that we got templates working here, let's go ahead and talk about static content. So I'm going to go over to our static folder. I'm going to make a new folder in here. I'm going to call it CSS. I'm going to make a new file call it main.css and then I'm just going to put some basic rule sets in here so body all right there we go so just getting rid of the margin setting the font family to sans serif let's go ahead and now link this in our base html so we're going to do link rel All right, and then in the URL here, we can't just type something like what would static CSS main.css. This won't work. Um, so what do we have to do? We have to use some more Jinja2 syntax here. Um, if you remember before, well, actually, it's in this page. Um, we were using the bracket percent. This is for stuff like if else statements for loops. And these are for things you want to be printed in, I guess, strings. So this is basically going to take the code you write in here, and it's going to give you the, the result of that as a string. So we need to use a function from Flask called URL4. And I don't know if we have to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and do it anyways. Just import URL4. And then I'm going to put parentheses here. And then I'm going to put in quotes here, single quotes, because this is a double quote. I'm going to put the name of the static folder, static. I'm going to type file name equals, and then more single quotes. 
and then I'm going to type the name of the file. And uh, you have to include any subdirectories in this, so since it's static, CSS, main.css, we have to put that in the file name. So CSS slash main.css. And that should be enough to link that uh, style sheet, so let's go ahead and see. And there you go, sans serif, no margin, it's right up against the edge. It is linking our style sheet. And this is the exact same thing for JavaScript. It would just be file name equals js slash main.js um, if that was the name of your JavaScript that you were trying to link. All right, so that does it for the basic Flask application. All right, I think we're ready to talk about databases now. So I'm going to go ahead and import SQL Alchemy. So from Flask underscore SQL Alchemy, import SQL Alchemy. All right, let's go under our app here, and we're going to add a config, and this is going to be SQL Alchemy database URI. So this is uh, telling our app where our database is located. And we're just going to be using SQLite. Um, there are lots of resources online for showing you how to do this with MySQL or Postgres or whatever you want to use. Um, but just to keep things simple, we're just going to use SQLite. So we're just going to go ahead and type SQLite, colon, and then three forward slashes. Four forward slashes is an absolute path. Three is a relative path. Uh, we want a relative path here because I don't want to have to specify an exact location. I just want it to reside in the project location. So I'm just going to go ahead and call this test.db. So that's what our database is going to be. Is everything's going to be stored in this test.db file. And then finally, we need to initialize our database. So we're just going to type SQL Alchemy app. Pass in our app like that. So our database is being initialized with the settings from our app. All right, so that's uh, initializing the database. Now we need to create a model here. So we're going to make a class, and I'm just going to call this to do. And this is a db.model, like that. I can give myself another new line there. All right, now that we've got our class, let's set up some columns. So the first one we need is an ID column. This is just going to be an integer that references the ID of each entry. So this is of type db.column, and then this is an integer. And uh, so this is going to be our primary key. So we're going to set primary key equals to true. And then we're going to create a text column here called content. And this is just going to be what holds each task. So this will be db.string. And then I'll say 200 characters, I think, is a good amount. And then I'm going to set nullable equal to false because we don't want this to be left blank. We don't want the user to be able to create a new task and then just leave the content of that task empty. So then finally, we just need one more called date created. And this is more for bookkeeping than anything. It's not um, something the user really needs access to. So this is going to be db.datetime like that with the capital T. And then we're going to set the default here. Um, Got to come up to the top real quick and import date time. So from date time, import date time. And then we're going to set the default equal to date time dot UTC now. Okay. All right. So basically, any time a new to do uh, entry is created the date created will just automatically be set to the time that it was created. So this we don't ever have to set manually, it'll always just be set automatically. All right, and then finally we just need a function that's gonna return a string every time we create a new element. So we're gonna go ahead and tell it what to return here. And we want it to return task. And then we'll just call self.id. So every time we make a new element, it's just going to return task and then the ID of that task that's just been created. And that does it for our model here. So let's go ahead and set up the database now. I'm going to head down to the terminal. And I'm going to just type... Well, actually, first I have to activate my environment. So let's do that. We bin activate. 
There we go. Okay, so now that our environment's activated, we can go ahead and just start a interactive Python 3 shell. So I'm going to type from app import db. So this is going to go ahead and import into our interactive shell this db uh, object up here. So then we're just going to type db.create underscore all. And that should create our database. And you can see it popped up right over here. So then we can exit out of that. And now we have our database set up. If you remember from earlier, I showed you that Taskmaster application. Um, we're going to go ahead and create that now. All right, so in our index.html file here, let's go ahead and get rid of this header. And I'm going to go ahead and set up a div here. I'm just going to call this content. And then I'm going to make a header. Just call this, or just have this say taskmaster. Then I'm going to come down here. I'm going to make a table. So let's create a table row, table header, task, and then added for the date that it was created, and then actions. Whoops. Okay, so that's uh, those are the three uh, columns we'll have. And then I'm just going to leave this empty for now. We'll come back to this. Actually, you know what? No, I'm going to do this. I'm going to create another row. And then I'm not going to put anything in here. I'm going to make another one. And I'm going to make one more. And then I'm going to add two links here. And I'm going to leave these empty for now. Just have this say delete. Add a break here and paste one more in, and this one will say update. Okay, so let's go ahead and run our server here and see what we've got now. Okay, so there we go. It says Taskmaster, we've got a table, and we've got some links here for the actions delete and update. All right, so let's head on over to app.py here. And we're going to come down to our index, and we need to change something. We need to come up into our decorator, and after the route, we're going to add an option called methods. And then we're going to set this equal to a list here, and this is going to be post in quotes, and then get in quotes. So this is adding two methods that this route can accept. Now instead of just get by default, we can now post to this route as well and send data to our database, which is exactly what we want to do. All right, so let's head over to our index file here. And then under table, we're going to add a form. And we're just going to set the action URL to our index. And then method equals, whoops, post. All right, and then Let's create two inputs. We're going to have a text input and a submit input. So text, set the name equal to content, and the ID is also content. And then input again, type is submit, value, add, task. All right, so those are our two inputs for our form. Just go ahead and look at this. And uh, it updated, but everything is now all messed up. That's okay, we'll fix that later. Not worried about it right now. All that matters is that and we've now got the form that we need. All right, so let's go over this one more time. Um, nothing in the head tag for now. We can actually, we can add a title if, if you want. I'll just call this uh, Taskmaster. Update this, and yeah, it says Taskmaster. Okay, so that doesn't matter. You can put whatever you want there, but uh, we've got a div here called content, um, header, taskmaster. Yeah, I could say whatever you'd like. Um, and then we're just creating a table. So I'm going to collapse this for now so we can get the whole thing in there. So these are our headers, task, added, and actions. And then we've got one more row. And we've just kind of written the skeleton for this for now because this is going to be where each new task is added. So this is going to be updated dynamically, uh, which we haven't gotten to yet, but we will in just a moment. 
All right, that's pretty much it for the HTML for now. So let's head back to our app.py file. And then we're going to come down to our index route here. And we're going we're gonna to change this a little bit. So we're going to start with an if statement. If request dot method equals equals post. So this is going to say if the request that's sent to this route is post, uh, do stuff there. And then else, um, do more stuff. So this is pretty much what we're looking at. If post, this is how we're going to grab the task and put it in our database. Otherwise, we're just pretty much looking at the, the page. So under else here, we can actually just put render template and just have it show us our page. So this should work. Well, it won't because we're not running it. So let's do that first. All right, uh, name error request is not defined. Come up to our import here and we just need to import that. And that should fix that. And there we go. So it's still just showing us our page. Um, and then if we were to submit that form, type error, the view function did not return a valid response because we're not actually returning anything. If I set this to return hello, that should do exactly what it says. It'll return hello if we submit our form, otherwise it's just gonna show us our page. So we've set that up. So let's go ahead and actually put our logic for adding a task in here. Let's create a variable. We're gonna call this task content, and then that request object again, form for that form we created. And then we're just gonna pass in the ID of the input that we wanna get the contents of, which was content. So task content is equal to the contents of this input right here. So then I'm just gonna go ahead and create a model for this. As you can see, our, we have our to-do model, so let's create a to-do object. That's going to have its contents equal to the content of that input. So now we've got our to-do model. All that's left to do is push it to our database. So we're gonna try db.session.add. So we're adding this to our database session, this new task. Then we want to commit. So db.session.commit, commit that to our database. And then finally, we just need to return and we're gonna return a redirect back to our index, which we have to come back up to our import again. And now we're gonna import redirect. So it's going to create a new task from that input. It's going to try to commit it to our database and then it's gonna redirect us back to our index page. If that does happen to fail, just create an accept here and we're just gonna return there was an issue adding your task. So just a plain string with the error message here is all we really need. This should, generally speaking, never fail, but just in case it does, and then we're gonna come down to else here, and we're going to create a variable called tasks. Set this to a to do dot query dot order underscore by to do dot date created dot all. So what is this? This is going to look at all of the database contents in the order that they were created, and it's just gonna return all of them. So we're just querying our database, we're ordering them by the date created, so newest to oldest, and then we're just grabbing all of them. You could also do first to grab the first, which would be the most recent if we're sorting by date. Um, we're just gonna grab them all. And this is how we're going to display all the current tasks in that table. And then we need to pass this to our template, and we're just going to set tasks equal to tasks, that variable we just created. And that does it for our index form. So let's head on over to the index.html and we just need to add some quick code here. Um, we're gonna come down to this row. I'm gonna indent this. And then we're gonna do some Jinja2 syntax here. And then we're just going to type for task in tasks. And this is going to grab all of the tasks in that task variable we passed to this template. And then we just need to end the for. 
All right, so then we're just gonna come up to our first TD tag here and we're going to do double curly braces and we're just gonna type task.content. So this is going to return the content of each task. And then we're just gonna do one more for the date created. And then we're just going to do dot date so it doesn't return the time as well because if you remember it's a date time object right here, date time. We just need the date, so date created dot date. And then over here, uh, we actually haven't set up our delete route yet, so I'm gonna leave that alone. But if I go ahead and start up our app here, you can see our table disappears. So let's go ahead and add a task. And as you can see, it pops up in our table. So the delete and update don't do anything yet, but as you can see, pushing to our database is currently working. So we've got the create part of our CRUD app done. So I'm just real quick, I'm going to copy over some CSS to clean up this page a little bit as it's kind of uh, just kind of not very attractive sitting there all the way in the corner like that. All right, so let me refresh here. And there we go. So that's kind of what we were looking at originally. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and just do this real quick. Go ahead and center align that text. So there we go. Okay, so that's that's what we had uh, earlier. All right, so now that we've got the create part done, let's go ahead and do the delete part because that's the next easiest. So let's head over to our app.py and we need to set up a new route for this. So I'm just gonna come under our index one here at app.route and then it's gonna be slash delete. And then we need to get the ID, um, this number right here is gonna be the easiest way of identifying a unique uh, task because if we go by content or anything like that, this con the, the content could be the same for multiple tasks. So we need a unique uh, identifier, which is what this primary key is here for. This will always be unique. You can never have a duplicate. So come over to here, slash delete slash, and then we're gonna put in a bracket here, int for integer, colon, and then the name of the variable. So we're just gonna call this ID. And then that's it for that. All right, so then let's just uh, find our function here. We'll call it delete, pass an ID as the variable that we need, and then we're ready to go. So let's go ahead and create a variable for the task that we want to delete. So task to delete, and then we're gonna query our database here, and we're gonna do get, so dot query dot get underscore or underscore 404 ID. So this is going to attempt to get that task by the ID, and if it doesn't exist, it's just gonna 404. So then let's do a try. Then we're gonna do db.session.delete. And then we're gonna pass in task to delete. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. Then we're gonna come under there and we need to commit this again. Dot commit. And then we're going to return a redirect back to our homepage. And then if this doesn't work, we'll just print another string with our error message. So there was a problem deleting that task. All right, so that is our delete route and this should actually work. I think we're good here. So let's go ahead and run our app again. And we've got this task in here. Actually, no, real quick, we do have to come over to our delete. So let's do slash delete and then double brackets here because we want to get the ID of that current task, so task.id. And that should, if we hover over this, you could see down at the bottom left there in the, the browser, it says slash delete slash one. So it's getting the ID of this task. So if we click delete, disappears. There we go, so that's the delete. All right, on to updating. So let's make one more route here. I'm gonna call it at app.route slash update slash and then we're going to do the same thing int id so we're going to grab the id of the task we want to update and then methods and we need to do the same thing as earlier with our index route because we're going to be posting so let's go ahead and do that and then let's go ahead and create the function so update id and then return for now, we'll just return nothing. 
Um, let's come over to our index here, and we're going to copy this, paste it down here, and instead of slash delete, we'll change this to slash update. And then we're going to make one more template here, and we're going to call this update.html. And we're going to just copy our index HTML here. We're going to get rid of this table because we don't need to show all of our tasks. We just want to show the one that we're updating. We'll change this to update task. So then the action will be slash update slash. And then we'll grab that whoops, task ID like that. Okay, so this should be our update page. I'm going to go over to our update route. I'm going to do if request dot method equals post pass because we'll add our code in a minute here. Else return render template update dot HTML. Okay. So there we go. I'm just going to go ahead and run this real quick and make sure that if we go to, oh, we need to make a new task, task here, the update page. Okay, so it did work. Um, it's returning an error. Task is undefined because I've called task.id. But if you notice in our function here, I'm not actually sending a variable called task. So let's come down. Actually, we'll do it up here. We'll create a variable called task equals to do dot query. Um, I think I typed that right. Yep. Dot. Actually, we could just copy this whole thing. Okay, there we go. So same thing as the delete. We're grabbing the task. Uh, we're just getting the task from the ID here because we're passing that into the URL. And then we'll come down to here and we'll pass that into our render template function here. And now this should work. There we go. So it's not grabbing the text from our task. As you can see, it says do the dishes in the laundry. When we click update, that's not in here. So let's auto populate that. Come over to update and then we'll set the value of this input, this text input to grab this instead of task.it or id task.content. So now that should, there we go, show the text of the task. So then we want when we click update, or, well, it doesn't say update because we, we have to change that here. Forgot about that. So there we go. Now if we click update, it's not doing anything. The view function did not return a valid response because if you remember, we're just doing a pass here. So let's go ahead and add our update logic. This is actually pretty easy. Um, task content equals request dot form content. Actually, got this wrong, task.content, not task underscore content, equals request.form. So we're just setting this current task's content to the content in this form's uh, input box. And then we just need to try db.session.commit. And we don't have to add or delete or anything. We just have to commit because we set the content right here. So we're not adding a new one. We're just updating. And then we need to do a return redirect back to our homepage. And that's it for that. So unexpected indent. Oh, yep. Forgot our exception here. Return. There was an issue updating your task. All right. Should be good now. Yep. Did not mean to open Chrome. Let's go ahead and update this task. So let's just change, do the dishes and the laundry and brush your teeth. And then click update and there you go. So we are now updating our task. Let's go ahead and make another task here so we can see that there are multiple entries popping up in this box here. Do the dishes and eat some broccoli. Definitely didn't spell that right. <laughs> Brock Oli. We're, we're going with we're going with two L's. Add task. So there we go. And then we can update all of these individually. Let's change that to a banana. Eat some uh, banana. Doesn't make sense, but it doesn't need to because we can just delete it. I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to delete that. 
and now we have nothing. So I'm going to add one more thing to our index page. I'm going to add an if statement and ginger two syntax. All right, and this is going to say if tasks, and then we're going to do a filter here. This is a ginger two filter. It's called length. This is going to get us the length of that list. And if it's less than one, so if there are no entries in it, we will go ahead and create one more here. And it's just going to say else. So if there are entries, we want to show this table. Um, but if there aren't any entries, we want to just show a header here that says there are no tasks. Create one below. And then close off that. And then we'll just copy this center style here for that as well. So now, I think this is still updating. Encountered unknown tag and block because we didn't end our if. So let's grab this end four here, come under table, and then change this from end four to end if. And now we should be good. There are no tasks, create one below. Oop, looks like there's some formatting issues. H4. Ah, not totally sure how I managed to do that, but should be good now. Okay, there we go. And then if we make a new task, do the dishes, add task, that goes away, now we see our table. So, I believe that's everything. We've got everything working. So that is a basic CRUD app. All right, so finally, let's talk about pushing to Heroku. Um, if you don't know what Heroku is, I'll go ahead and show you. Go to heroku.com. It's pretty much a service that lets you host any number of different web apps, whether it's Node.js, uh, Ruby on Rails, PHP, Python, that could be Django, Flask, what have you. And uh, they'll, they'll host your app for you and pretty much run it off their own servers and not your own. So you can also create databases through them, and it pretty much makes it really easy to manage and run a web app without having to set up your own web server. So I already have an account. If you don't, just go ahead and click sign up and sign up for free. Uh, they have a free tier. You will have to use your credit card if you want to add any of their database functionality. But since we were just using uh, SQLite, we don't have to worry about that. So free tier is fine. Um, so yeah, just go ahead and sign up. And then once you've signed up, go ahead and look up Heroku CLI. We need the command line interface here. And it's that first link. Just go ahead and click that, come down to download and install here, and you can see there are installers for whatever system you're on. So just go ahead and install that. And then once that's installed, let's head down to our terminal here and type in Heroku login. And that's going to pull this up. I've already logged in before, so it knows my email. If uh, you probably haven't before, so just go ahead and type yours in. Hit enter, type your password, hit enter, and it should log you in just like that. All right, now that that's done, let's go ahead and create an empty Git repository. Uh, I feel like I should mention that you do need Git if you don't have Git installed. Um, just go ahead and go to git-scm.com and install it off of there. Um, and then once that's installed, you'll be able to use the Git command line as well. Um, actually, before we do that, we need to freeze our requirements. And actually, before we do that, we need to install a dependency. So let's go ahead and make sure you're in your virtual environment here. We're going to type pip3 install, and it's called gunicorn, G-U-N-I corn. Hit enter and go ahead and let that install. It should go pretty quick. And then you can go ahead and freeze your requirements. So pip3 freeze requirements dot text. And that's going to spit out all our requirements in a text file here. And now that we're done with that, we can go ahead and initialize an empty git repository. So git init. So initialized empty git repository, git add and then period just to add everything in the directory and then that's done so then we need to commit I'll just say init app for the comment here and then that's going to commit everything to the repository so now we can finally create our Heroku app so Heroku create and then uh, your application name this can only be lowercase letters it can only have dashes and numbers so we're just gonna create one called flask crud app tutorial and I'm gonna hit enter it's going to go ahead and create our app. So then we can type git remote-v, and we can see uh, where we're pushing to. So git.heroku.com, and then we're pushing that application we just created. So let's type git push heroku master, hit enter, 
And finally, this is going to push everything to Heroku. And I actually just realized we're missing a crucial file here, so I'm going to let this finish up. And uh, it's not going to work, and I will show you why in just a second. All right, so it finished, but uh, it's not going to work. I'm going to go ahead and open it up anyways. I'm just going to copy that, head to our browser, type that in, and hit enter, and we get an application error. Why do we get an application error? Well, we're missing a file that tells Heroku what to do with all these files. I've pretty much just pushed a directory of files, and Heroku's just kind of sitting there, twiddling its thumbs, not knowing what to do with them. So we got to tell it what to do with them. So we need to create a file called a proc file. So I'm just going to go ahead and type touch proc file with a capital P. There's no extension. It's just proc file. And then we need one line. It's really short. Web colon gunicorn. So we're going to call that library we installed. Um, well, it's not really a library. It's uh, It creates a web server. And then we need to tell it what file to create a web server for. So our app file app colon app. And that's it. So now if we git add everything, git commit dash m added proc file git push heroku master hit enter and now it should work so i'm going to go ahead and let this do its thing and then when i return hopefully we'll have a working web app on the internet all right so here we go let's go ahead and check this out and there you have it uh well we should probably make sure it works first so i'm going to go ahead and add do the dishes Looks like it popped up there. See if update works. Do the dishes and eat some broccoli. Looks like that's working. Let's see if we can delete it. And there we go. Looks like everything's working. And as you can see, this is running on HTTPS at our application URL. So this is running on a live web server. All right. Thanks, everyone, for watching. That does it. Um, this Git repository will be available. Uh, hopefully, it'll be in the description. I hope you learned something. I hope it was helpful, um, and I'll see you around.